Hello everybody and welcome! A while ago I was visiting the Boeing factory in Everett, Washington and I might have seen one of the most Kerbal airplanes ever during the factory tour. While it was very interesting and also quite impressive to see giant airplanes being built right in front of me, I was not allowed to take pictures or video during the tour itself. What you can see here is video material from the official Boeing YouTube channel, so you can go check that out. I did however get a chance to step inside a replica of the Destiny Lab module for the International Space Station, which was great. And I was able to witness the unloading of that aforementioned very unique cargo plane, the Dreamlifter. According to Boeing, this is the cargo plane with the largest available cargo volume in the world. The compartment offers 1840 cubic meters, significantly more than for instance the Airbus Beluga, another cargo plane with peculiar shape, or the venerable Antonov 124, although that one can carry heavier loads. The official designation is Boeing 747-400 Large Cargo Freighter, LCF for short, and only four of them are in existence. All of them were originally passenger planes that Boeing bought back from airlines and converted into being the Dreamlifter. All of them use the Pratt & Whitney 4000 series engines, which I believe are older than the Rolls-Royce engines uh, used in newer 747-400 passenger planes. So why does the Dreamlifter need to have such a large cargo bay? As the name suggests, this plane is part of Boeing's 787 Dreamliner program. That aircraft's hull and wings are almost entirely made out of carbon fiber, an industry first. But that means that the nose, tail, fuselage and wings need to be produced in one piece each. Boeing has contracted companies in Japan, South Korea, Italy and the US to make them, so a method of transporting these to the assembly plant in Everett was needed. Since no other means of transportation were available, Boeing made one, resulting in the 747-400 LCF Dreamlifter. As you can see in my video, there is this entire infrastructure going on. After the plane lands, a special vehicle is attached to the tail to swing it open, revealing the huge cargo compartment. Then, specialized cargo vehicles raise a platform and align it with the plane. A rail system delivers the Dreamliner parts onto the cargo vehicle, which then takes them to a hangar next to the unloading area. The Airbus Beluga uses a similar system, but as you can see here, it has its cargo opening in the front and not the back. Boeing's factory uses just-in-time production, meaning only those parts that are actually needed for the current production step are present in the factory. There are no giant warehouses full of airplane fuselages or anything of that kind. I can only assume the hangar is a sort of staging area where they store the Dreamliner parts for a short duration and inspect them to make sure they were not damaged during transport. As you can see in my video, a large fuselage part leaves that hangar and makes its way to the main factory building. Only then can the new arrivals get into the hangar to be inspected. What we can see delivered here are the nose and tail section of a 787. You may notice that all parts are wrapped in white plastic. Boeing uses color coding to distinguish which part is made out of which material. Aluminium parts for the 7478 are wrapped in green. The carbon fiber parts for the Dreamliner are wrapped in white. There are other colors as well for different composite materials, but I have forgotten what they are. One interesting thing is, and I hope I remember this correctly, that the nose part comes with all the necessary electronics already inside. After the Dreamliner parts were extracted, the Dreamlifter was loaded with some sort of cargo brackets, probably to take them back to the respective factory to put new parts on there. The entire process took about one and a half hours, but I have condensed it down to a few minutes for your viewing pleasure. If you enjoyed this real-world Kerbal airplane, you might also enjoy my Kerbal Space Program videos, so please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.